nation glorious by your presence. I'm sure that you have got a fantastic feast of uh, the modern trends of thoughts in uh, dealing with the brain. Of course, brain. Of course, brain has uh, enchanted the world over for the last uh, thousand years or two thousand years or much more than that without knowing the brain was the culprit or the promoter what was doing all the nonsense of the human troubles and human problems. Probably. So, having, having heard such a beautiful lecture, I would invite you to the, the scenario or the meadow of the, the technology profile or the meadow of technology or which we will be able to see that what he was trying to speak how do we put effort to translate into reality? There was a question from one of the professors that are these all hypotheses? All of the things what we believe are hypotheses. Some of the hypotheses are supported by the, the evidences and we escalated it to axioms. And there are many axioms today which are fighting to be proven, probably mute, inactive, and untruth also. So this is the world in which we live. For example, the world, what you see, are they the true world? It is actually a paradox. This is the imagination or the perception, what you get in the brain, what makes it to you. Okay? The cat is not seeing all the colors. And the bird is not seeing the same type of colors the cat sees. And the human being, is getting actually a VIPGR spectrum. The spectrum is not seven colors. Believe it. And it is your perception what makes seven colors. And the spectrum I can shoot it up to how much ever you want. For every frequency I can put at back, I can color it. This is the freedom we have today. Our intellectual level has grown to that level of maturity in understanding. We understand the reality, we understand much beyond that also. This is the trait of thoughts of 21st century. I invite all of them who are interested in knowing about it, follow the path, explore, as he said. This is the exciting channel of this century. Go to the next slide, please. Sir. Keep with you and you. So I will be talking over the, uh, the subject the computing technologies. You have learned enough about many types of technologies what you have. I will be about touching on. First I will talk about the neuromorphic computing. Neuro you have heard enough. Neurons are the basic building blocks. Not only really neurons. She should have, uh, if you would have allowed him more time, he would have exposed the brain. There are other cells actually, the glial cells, and there are basic structures to hold this. So the whole brain when it's projected to an ordinary man, man or woman, of course. So when we are projecting it, you are seeing the whole structure. But what is computing? Are those force computing? Or are those components inside computing? This is the question I will touch upon. So I take the neuron. Neuron has got actually the basic components or the regions of its performance. It has got actually the dendrites the soma region, the axons, and synapse. And in all these four layers, or five regions of activity, they behave entirely differently. And many of the places we are understanding now with a quantum touch. It is not time for running into that. What is neuromorphic? I have the neurons. I have seen it in the microscope. I have seen it in the electron microscope. I have dissected it. I have got into the axons and I have seen that there are 12 fibers or 14 fibers inside. I have gone to the NMDA receptors. I have seen the vesicles, calcium vesicles. It is exploding and then putting the dopamine into the synapse uh, cleft. So there are several things happening in the neurons. And my humble effort is today, the humanity's humble effort today is to put the morphism, the shapes, actions into an electronic gadget. 
or a realistic materialistic gadgets that gadget I want to translate neurons. The process of transforming it is called the neuromorphism and neuromorphic engineering, neuromorphic computing, and this neuromorphic computing is an approach. You got it? Now let's look at use silicon circuits to mimic the neurobiological architectures as I told you and then realize the nervous system probably not the way in which human being has got if I can realize something very close to the fly I am delighted the fly starts working analog and digital mixer mode that implement the neural like systems there were questions to write which is right that how do I realize it it can be digital, it can be analog, it can be the core design, analog and then digital core design for the hybrid designs. You can do it with your cadence on the desktop. So, analog and digital mix of more perceptions and then why, why do I do it? I do it, I think I missed uh, the first slide. Can you go back? This is how every other professor senses. After he passed the, the major milestone, Prior to this, prior to this, yeah, this is what. So the growth in computing I was trying to tell you. So the Charles Babbage to Alan Turing, you had several discussions on many angles and many phases. Formation of the sequential processing machine and the role of wires you have seen. Where do we stand? Why do we want to think about the advanced structures? Why do we want to? to replace your supercomputers and the part of devices with a better one. Is it better one? These are some of the questions we are looking at. Inventions of transistor and the replacement of the walls we have seen. Tremendous growth in the silicon components and its integrations and architectures we have seen from 1970s to 19, uh, probably 2010. We have seen actually from few hundreds to few tens of billions and then ranging from few hundreds as I said to a few billions components and manage the ability of the associated logic. How do you manage actually few billions? Few tens of billions. There are methods and practices with the human being. We will be able to deal it and we will be able to connect it such a way that a perfect productive computing I can bring in. But what computation is that? So the growth is horizontal because it's a one human architecture. It goes for the memory. It goes for the memory and takes instruction after instruction. Or you can go for the hardware architecture. You can take some of them parallelly. Not beyond that, you are stuck. This is the primitive originating thinking of the human being. One after another. But many of the nature's process. They are not one after another. They are mostly parallel, coherent, and objective. So, we cannot easily get into these three types. But, I'm telling you, you have the notion of the one human architecture. It can spread only horizontally. It can move from 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000 to 1 million by integrating the process on the flow or independently getting connected. You can't do anything more than that. It cannot make a transformation by knowing each other. If at all knowing, you will be making a very primitive algorithm by which you will force each one to talk to each other. And that is limited by the guy who makes it. There it falters. We want better processes capable of understanding themselves and interacting each one. What is next slide? Well, this is the vision we have. We have the old uh, machines. We respect it, standing on the shoulders of the old mechanical computing machines, I think. At the same time, we had the growth in VLSI, and then we have realized many of the old computers of the desktops in which I was working maybe sometimes back. And now I moved to this supercomputer. I give us produced, Cray has produced, various other companies have produced the supercomputers. They are trying to reach a few bit of flocks by integrating horizontally. But all are constrained by the one human architecture, the memory structure, the way in which you take from the memory, we decode it, and then we execute it, one after another we store it. 
So, I am looking forward to escape from this architecture and make something new in technology. This box is empty. It is for you to fill it if you know how to do it. A change from the computer, conventional computers to a gross computer formed by computing nodes. Petaflop in palm. Petaflop in large, large building is the stage of today. Maybe after 300 years, the human being, when look back to these supercomputers, they would even, uh, I, I may not like if I am at that time, to see that, you know, it is worth looking at it even. It is so ridiculously flimsy in its architecture. And when compared to what nature expresses across the galaxies to leave alone galaxies to the multiverse, to down to the atom, to the subparticle spots, and then the invisible exchanging mass and energy when I am looking, they are all actually absolutely riveting, but they have supported, we are very thankful to you, the supercomputers. Next one. So this is what uh, led to me to talk about. It is high time to change to modern thought process, modern inventions, discoveries, and the transformation of human excellence into the computing by emulating what nature could develop on this year. Why can't I develop it? It's an extension of nature when I'm doing it. So let's look into that, I said, and then who are the promoters? Of course, the Americans are spending large amount of money. Like DARPA has promoted the systems of neuromorphic adaptive plastic scalable electronic snaps about four and a half years back. Some of the parts I was also participating. So the synapse is actually heavily funded one of the order of billion and many people got actually 10 to 20 to 25 million and they have made it. And some of the successful guys are the, my friend actually Motha from uh, uh, IBM and uh, in the HP side and in HRL. There are a few companies actually they have come up and then uh, Georgia Tech and uh, Purdue. They all got the money and then they made it actually. They made something very special. What are they? Go to the next one. Neuromorphic computing is an approach, as I said, silicon circuits. They realized they can, and this is the only option. They can realize only in the silicon. Have you seen any other strong computing machine in any other device other than silicon? Silicon or maybe actually uh, some of the nitro oxides we can make actually very nice gas in few things we can try, but the most popular one, the technology step-based one, etching it over or realizing it over the wafers of sleep. Implementation through oxide-based memory states also was tried. This was tried in early, some of my friends, and threshold switches and transistors. Success depends on understanding the neurons and its cluster dynamics. Whatever I do, there is a gap between what neurons are doing and what I am mimicking. This is the scenario today. Go to the next slide. How the information is processed. This is the question. Professor Roy has repeatedly emphasized the information processing. It is not yet fully known, he says. So how the information is processed. Learning, adaptability to changes, the plasticity, the facilitate, the facilitate, how it can facilitate evolutionary change. And I want, actually, not only the computer science, I want biology, physics, mathematics, computer science, and electronics knowledge to merge all these things and come close to the neurons which are doing wonders in your brain and in cat's brain and of course that famous octopus who did wonders actually migrating over the multiple dots. So, various attempts have been done. Field programmable neural array tool, you know, Georgia Institute of Technology, and they got money from uh, DARPA for it. MIT came with a chip analog, means iron based communication using 400 transistor nodes. So they, they are claiming that you know they are actually emitting the neurotransmitters and they are modulatable. But it's a quantum modulation. This is the latest invention. When a vesicle of calcium is fired, calcium opens and it injects actually neurotransmitters. Many of them are the dopamines and the uh, NMDA type molecules. We will not get into those details of the proteins. So the MIT came with the chip at the next one. This is the technology somebody was asking. Purdue's Spintonics researchers 
They put forward lateral spin balls and then member stress. All of you with the electronics engineers here must be knowing what is memristor. Memristor is a device, a two-pin device. It remembers the past. Probably I will sit with Sirkulit uh, Sishiroi whether I can make a Bayesian network using the memristor. I have not searched. Might have done also. Memristor will know the previous resistance or the previous current, what it has afforded, and it marks where I can make use of it again and again which could be used in the uh, performance of the neuron. In September 2013, HP came with the newest term, a spiking device which can emulate circuits of neuron. Claims. Claims over claims. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Hundreds of people working. Hundreds of people working. And then Stanford University came with neuro grid. 16 custom chips, neuro cores, and 65, 536. Probably the first bungling starts when we start believing everything I can realize to raise me up. When I see 65, 536, I smile at them. Next one. Even during the project of the Euro, uh, by Henry, come, come, come rock. Okay. So Henry has projected it. He got $1 billion. He got $1 billion to have a 10-year project. He's from Switzerland and the tenure collaborative projects with multiple universities, complete human brain, getting simulated in the, in the supercomputer, not realizing in the silicon or not realizing in any of the other uh, format. So, what happens actually? Looks into the brain and its disease, 1.3 billion. The project is on the way and sometimes I get some of the review reports to have my comments. And then the neuro memory chip systems, the memory state circuit for plasticity, the adaptability to the changes and holding the change, the plasticity of the neurons, whether it can be realized with memory states. With proper algorithms, these are expected to show better cognitive computation like brain death. In reality, the spikers just spike. This is this is my sentence. People have made enough spikes with one billion dollars. I agree and it has got connectivity and integrability also but it has not reached the real neuron yet in reality the spike is just spikes brain is far more complicated than the neuronal spikes a long way to get the brain in silicon next one and that summarizes the neuromorphic computing technology of the world today and we can have one in India too Let's look into that. At the same time, are we stuck with computing only in the brain way? Nature has offered another pathway to you. You have got enormous amount of molecules around you. You have seen inside portions of the molecule. You have more than many of the molecules. You know protein-protein interaction and dynamics. You know RNA, RNA and DNA dynamics. You know the molecular dynamics inside the nucleus. And you have charted several types of forms of atomic and molecular dyes. Not only that, you can sense many of the things far below the fundamental nucleus getting into the uh, the, the, uh, uh, the subparticle domains of baryons, parts and uh, various other things, leptons. So, having seen this, there is an order and discipline there. They are an order and discipline there. They transform from one state to the other. Anything which is capable of transforming from one state to the other in an orderly fashion, which Professor Roy was trying to show with a mapping between the two domains, the, the source and the range. The mapping can be linear, non-linear, he explained it beautifully. So most of the things will be taking place in the linear mode, in the harmonic levels, and many other things will be taking place in the non-hand body or in the non-linear modes and those non-linear modes along with the linear modes create an opportunity for us to <coughs> take control of computation. You give the source, you can get the destination or you give the source uh, information, you will be getting the processed information. But the processing you cannot imagine to be John Badin's transistor getting arrayed and then it flip-flops and it takes two raised to n states. There are alternate methods of doing it. Let's look into that. So the quantum mechanics I told you, it's a fascinating, fascinating discovery of the 20th century. How the atoms are getting formed, 
how the electrons are positioned around the nucleus, how the nucleus is actually activated and then functioning in a stable way, how the interactions are taking place between the atoms, how the interaction is taking place between electrons and the nucleus, and uh, the variety of other reactions of the world and universe, we could explain with the quantum mechanics. The basic principles of quantum mechanics lay on the second equation here, produced by Schrodinger, one of the gifted scientists, it's a simple equation. There is no complexity in that. The Hamilton, the energy of a system, is actually I x cut h by 2 by of the variations taking place in that function in temporal way. How simple it is. How simple it is and beautiful it is. When time changes, states change in the wave functions, and it will be a measure of the energy. But there is a big problem. If you are going into the classical mechanics of the position and the momentum, and if you are taking the position and momentum, you want to see both together, you have an uncertainty. You cannot resolve it below a value h by 2. So, using these two principles, we look into what we can do with the fundamental particles, what we can do with the atoms to have state changes under my command and control. What is under my command and control? This is called the computation. Initial states to final state transformation is called actually the, the uh, quantum computation, the way which yesterday Professor John Bryden was trying to cite that point. I will transform it from one state to the other. I get the computation output. Okay, the systems obey such rules and regulations and express many of the phenomenon at atomic and molecular levels. That you people have seen. Next one. Right. The QC, the quantum, quantum computing may have similarity, non-deterministic computations. Professor Roy has shown in the morning a probabilistic computation with Bayesian architecture. So, many of the things here, because I am throwing many waves into the space, and I am allowing them to migrate in several modes of coherence, and then I will be having a statistical distribution. Of course, so quantum mechanics also many of the time shows similarity to the statistical form. So actually quantum computers are still in its infancy, but experimental assessment done on computing capability with very small numbers of the qubits. What are those qubits? Qubits are similar to the bits you have. Bit has got two states, zero and one, and the qubit has got much more combinational states formed by the zero and one. We call it as the quantum mechanical phenomenon, actually the entanglement and superposition. So superposition will be actually homogeneous waves. I can make it into coefficients combined as a polynomial. That also is a combined wave. It's a state by itself. And its components are known with the weighted values, which will be actually uh, giving me the state of reality, provided the probability reaches 1, which I will be explaining to you. So, the uh, superposition and entanglement offers an opportunity to make multiple states, not only limited by 0 to 1. Suppose that you have got n bits in the conventional computer, you get 2 raised to n states. Here, much more than that, depending on the selection, what I'm doing. Many national governments and militaries spend money on quantum computing. And they are spending, and we may spend in India too shortly. Let's see. How QC is better, quantum computing is better, its current approach can solve many problems like next slide. So the quantum may, many body problems and typical factorization. I'm not stuck with this. I'm sure that we can solve many, many other things because the controlling part of the quantum phenomenon is not properly arrived at. Classical computer has a memory made up of bits, and here this is the memory is actually embedded into the operation itself. Can you think a computer where the memory is a part of the operation? Yeah, you can read uh, my latest thing in the uh, Elsevier Neuron Journal, where I'm defining actually the six facets of uh, six facets are to come in the nature. So the previous one, ten characteristic of cognitions in that this is actually defined. The classical one. The binary bit will get to two positions like one or zero. And the quantum bond, the temporal state can be at any superposition of its two states, zero and one. 
I take a part of zero, I take a part of one. Easy to understand. Those parts I can decide provided the probability reaches one, that state I can hold. But I cannot measure it. If at all I am measuring, I will be doing several times to reach a probabilistic measurement. Next one. Next one. Okay. If there are two qubits, it can be at the superposition of four states already I have told. Quantum computing can operate by setting the qubits control initial state. How do you compute? How do you do the quantum computing? You have an initial state where I will have the controllability. I will have the state defined and I will define the quantum process where I am taking the initial state into the final state. And the final state I have to observe, which is not easy. Through a quantum logic gates, I can progress in the computation. Quantum gate sequence represents the algorithm. So what is that quantum algorithm? It's the sequence of transformation. And transformation I will splinter. I will cut it into pieces and put it into quantum gates. Okay? And those gates I will limit in the quantum model. And through that the initial state passes, I will get the final state. But can I observe the final state as easy as I did in the von Neumann? Measurement and results. Any computation need to yield a result. We also agree. Here we the quantum state changes leading into the execution. But how did we get it? Because the collapses to a classical 2 raised to n. Okay, pure state. It's possible in the usual one, but here it will be a combination of states. If I try to measure it, it drifts. I will not be able to get it. It collapses to a real state, which is much closer to the real state in which it was. It is difficult until you get into the complexities of the quantum mechanics to realize what I speak now. I will be able to measure it, but it collapses to a real state, which is not exactly the state where I measure. You know the quantum, uh, the uncertainty what I have shown to you, which is actually the momentum and the position simultaneously I cannot measure. Next one. The quantum logic of qubit state as used in the quantum information processing. Okay, that will be actually represented by the KIP uh, notation, which uh, actually yesterday Professor John Bryden has explained. I have put it here too. Next one. So the state of 3-bit computer I am explaining. A 3-bit computer will go to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and its polynomial combinations of the quantum states. Next one. Using such approaches, several potential problems can be solved. What are they? In incredible speed, I can find out the, the factors if it is not a prime number. Prime factors of it automatically with the sure algorithm. And then I can go for multi-body simulations by giving one click into the quantum model. It will say that this is the solution, which is, cannot be done by a supercomputer within three days of petaflops. And the external energy, there is a big problem with the quantum computer. There is a big problem. What is that problem? The current perceptions of quantum computing realized through the materials. They are offering actually the quantum transitions from the lower level or the initial level, sorry, initial level to the final level and they need to be protected against the decoherence. Decoherence means I can operate proper computation only if I maintain the coherent computational stream which I started with the initial state. So decoherence from where does it come? It comes from the environment as the thermal energy, thermal bands, thermal transfers become equal to the eigenstates of the quantum machine and the progression and they migrate inside the system. They add because these are all easily addable systems actually quantum mechanical if they are friendly. Okay, one friend can easily come in and join the rhythm and it can spoil the whole show. So that way decoherence will come. Your results are not going to be accurate. Next one. How to avoid the decoherence? Okay, this is the decoherence I was talking. This is a coherent set of waves. The computation progresses in this way. But these are all single spectral frequency actually. Single spectral quantum state. And then it changes into multispectral and decoherent waveforms. And it doesn't have any meaning if I measure. Provided 
an external agency comes in and spoils the coherence like this. This is the easiest, easiest way to perceive. So things have to move in the coherent mode and if anybody spoils it, your answer is absolutely incorrect. So controlled by, how do, how do they realize it today? Today it is controlled by keeping the whole chip or the operation where I'm observing very close to minus 273 degree Kelvin. So 20 degree milli Kelvin is the accuracy with which I keep to the absolute zero. Next one. There are different approaches to stability. The stability is affected by the uh, uh, affected by the progression of the waves from the external world. I can switch over to a possible thing. Actually, I can go to quasi-quantum dynamics, which I am getting in the quantum fractional power effect. Quantum fractional power effect have several Nobel prices gone behind it, and several may come in future too. Because these anions are actually the electron pairs. They get into pairing and they lose the property of the electron and they behave like bosons. And their dynamics offers a variety of opportunity for us to compute and they can be used. And to some extent, decoherence problem is not affecting such a mode. That is 2DE surfaces of the order of 10 nanometer surface. I will be having the coating and I will be applying heavy magnetic fields. Okay? If you... Okay. Half 10% will move towards the... towards harnessing the quantum phenomenon and realize quantum computers into the hands of humanity. It has never reached. It is in the some of the wealthy labs of the world, the Google and DARPA and few others, actually. Reichen Research Lab, they are trying. Since we do not know, we cannot say that the world is not moving. The world is really moving. Third world countries and the other developing countries and other developed countries, they are not doing it. That doesn't mean that we are not moving. Humanity is moving forward. There is an enormous effort to capture this. And we all can be the members of it, provided you put a hard effort to understand the meaning of the nature much deeply, sharply, and convincingly. This process is missing most of the time in the current education I find. Thank you very much. If anybody wants, you can contact me. Anybody want, you can contact me.